hated. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would come and take your word and break it open to our hearts, Lord. Reveal yourself to us, Lord. We just want to commit this time, Lord, and the Sunday school and the service into your hands for your glory, Lord. Would you just create an atmosphere that the word would brood over your people, Lord, and enter into their hearts, Lord, by faith, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. So I know Brother Jason announced that I was going to be preaching regular service, but we switched that up a little bit. I took Sunday school, and my father-in-law, Brother Don Hoffman, will be taking the regular service. So just in case that was in your in your mind, what, in, what he's going to preach and do Sunday school, what's the deal here? <laughs> so continuing from last week, I think we, I felt like we made good progress last week getting to where I wanted to go to, but I went really fast and there was a lot there, so I want to really take the time to uh, really establish more of the things that I said using scriptures and quotes. Um, we had them there and I referred to them, but we're going to use more this time. So, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated, kind of picking up from what I spoke about before, right in the same family you have elect and non-elect right in the same family, right from the same parents, right from the same pool of genetics. And as we talked about, and we're going we're gonna to look at this closely, is that God took his life, when he cre created Adam, he put his life into Adam, and, and his life into Eve. And God's desire and his purpose was to, from them, bring forth I'll call it the God race, the seed, predestinated seed of God, so that this earth would be filled with everyone who's made in God's image and likeness. Satan came in temptation against that purpose and injected that hybrid seed into the human race, right? Then we fast forward as time goes on and we get to the, the, the era leading up to the flood, it says, the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. Two seed lines, Cain's line, the daughters of men, and uh, Seth's line, the sons of God, right? So Seth was the son of Adam. Adam was the son of God. So that life coming forward, passing down to Seth, but then it goes forward. Those two lines become hybrid. And then we watch and see God says, Every thought and imagination of the heart of man, a man's heart is evil continually. I'm going to start over. But then what was produced from Adam and Ham, Shem, and Japheth and their wives? Same thing. Directly to the Tower of Babel, dictatorship, false religion. And so when we look at this, the portion that becomes, uh, is the mystery, I believe, that God showed to Brother Branham through who is this Melchizedek and some of the different sermons is that this, this genetic life, this life, and even through the teaching, his teaching on the virgin birth, that genetic life from God is to be passed down through the human race, through mother and, your mother and father. And in one family, you can have uh, some children predestinated of God, some that are not. Why? Because that gene goes in there, and as we looked at, it can be dorm it can it can it can be a gene that's inactive. So it's the gene of God is inoperable. Then the next generation raise up, and it goes through and passed on, and it's active, right? And so again, I'm explaining it. I, there's I have quotes behind all this, and I want to I want to show you this, but that's the portion that if you start to preach this in a denominational church, you'll get. A, a boot out the place because they consider that this idea as complete nonsense, complete fanaticism to to say that the genetic life, but it, because of that, they twist the Trinity Trinitarian un, into a Trinitarian understanding to make Father, Son, and Holy Spirit three separate persons because they don't understand the how the life of God works, and that to me probably the greatest revelation that God brought to Brother Branham was how the life of God operates and how it works. 
and you see with serpent seed, and then you see the necessity that there be a virgin birth. Why? Because everyone was tainted by that serpentine nature. Every one of us are mixed, hybrid, right there in our body, soul, and spirit completely. So then it, it, he has to bypass that totally, and then there, the life of God is born, the very, the very Son of God, who was God himself. Why was he God himself? Because the very life of God was in that human body which had a beginning. These things, these things are, are if, if you're not amazed and stunned and in awe of them, you're, you're missing something. Because what Brother Branham teaches is, is absolutely incredible, earth-shattering stuff. It really is. So, the word Genesis in the Greek translation uh, is the word beginning, in the beginning. Our term gene, it has the same, same origin. Gene is a unit of heredity which is transferred from a parent to offspring and is held to determine some characteristic of the offspring. Gene speaks of origin in connection with its characteristic. Our nature and characteristics come from our origin. As we spoke about before, every aspect of our being comes from our parents, our genetic life, what we are. We're made up of DNA. That DNA is what determines what we are. That comes from our, our, our parents and the, the hereditary line that we come from. All is passed down there. Body, soul, and spirit. All of that. And so we looked at this before, dominant and recessive genes. Dominant refers to the relationship between two versions of a gene. Individuals receive two versions of each gene, known as alleles, from each parent. If the alleles of a gene are different, one allele will be expressed. It is the dominant gene. The effect of the other allele, called recessive, is mask. And you can see that that is an explanation of why in one family, why you have Jacob, who is from the genes of God, and Esau, who is not, right there in the same family. And then you go on down years, 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 and the gospel starts going to the Gentiles, and then people from Esau's line begin to receive the gospel. Yeah. Amen. Hebrews 7, 5, and then we'll read 9 and 10. And verily they that are of the sons of Levi... Who receive the office of the priesthood have a commandment to take, t take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. See, there's the picture coming from the loins of Abraham. And as I may so say, Levi also, who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham, for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. So in, in God's sight, it's not just a, you know, there's, there's, there's DNA passed on and it's just generic and it's, we don't know who's coming forth. No, God is literally looking at Abraham and say, Levi is coming, right? David is coming, et cetera, et cetera, down the line. So it's not, it's not as though it's some generic DNA, but it's God molding and shaping something through that genetic line. Ephesians 1, 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. I think this is important to look at. What does it mean that we were chosen in him before the foundation of the world? Again, are we looking at just an expression of thought? Is it, a, is it merely... A thought, that we were there as a thought in him before the foundation of the world? Or is, is it speaking something more than that, that he had, we were literally in him? We, our life was in him. If, was Levi just a thought in Abraham? He wasn't even that, right? But he was genetically in Abraham. Abraham didn't choose that Levi was going to be his grandson or anything. He was just there. Right? And so we are chosen in God. So where were we? Our genetics, our DNA was in God. Amen. And what is that? It's beyond just coding. 
It's a, there's an actual life. There's a substance. There's something real that's, that's there. We were in him before the foundation of the world for all of eternity. If, if you catch that in the Church Ages book, God doesn't have new thoughts. Our th- the thoughts of God are eternal. They're unchanging. We were there in him for all eternity as a part of his life. No, you didn't know it. You weren't existing literally in fellowship, but your life was in him just like Levi's life was in Abraham. Now I want you to look at this from questions and answers on Genesis, speaking about uh, God's order. He was, in other words, Adam, the first man in the lower creations of God. So now I want you to notice what he says. The first creation was God himself. This isn't saying God was created. It's speaking the order of creation. So God is first in order, right? God is first. Then out of God came the Logos, which was the Son of God, which the Logos is not created either. The Logos is birthed. It's, it, was a part, it was in God for all of eternity. Then just prior to creation, it comes forth as a birth. Out of God. Brother Benham says a part of God went out of God. He didn't say the word was created. He said a part of God went out of God. And that's significant because it's his life expressed. Uh, then out of God came the Logos, which was the Son of God. Then out of Lo- the Logos, which was the Word, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Out of the Logos came forth the man. So you see this understanding is we're, 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 we're talking about the life. So the life is coming forth. The life of the Word was in God. The, the life of Adam was in the word, right? So this life is coming forth. It's coming out of him in unveiling of God. It says that's the way God did. He bred this one to that one, this one to that one, to this one to that one, till he got exactly what he wanted. That's how he come down. Do you see that significance there? He says he's, got, he's working in the very uh, genetics of the human race to produce what he wants to produce. Isn't that an incredible thought? In our ancestors, I mean, he, he was planning you. And if the Lord tarries, he's planning other generations, right? In, he, he was, all of this goes back thousands of years to this one married this one. Nothing happens by chance. Every, God is totally sovereign in everything that he does. He's totally sovereign in your family's parentage. He's totally sovereign in your grandparents, great-grandparents, and, and on and on down the line because he wanted to produce something, you, yeah. right? Amen. We read this last week. I'm going to read it again from the rapture. In the little, literal discharge of the male, there's somewhat a million germs comes forth the male at each time and somewhat a million eggs from the female at the same time. But did you know, in all of them, little germs moving around, a million of them, there's only one of them ordained to life and there's only one egg fertile and that little germ will call right up through every one of them other little germs right over the top of every germ looking just like him and come over the top of that and come over here and find that fertile egg and crawl into it and then all the rest of them die why talk about the virgin birth oh it's not half as mysterious as a physical birth how it's foreordained predestinated by God you see what care what involvement God has in every aspect to produce that life there. He looks even to the very sper- proper sperm and proper egg to bring together, and then he sets forward the DNA just the way he wants it. So this is just referring to some, uh, putting together a few different quotes from last week. This is from communion. In their nature, I was a sinner. All the habits of the world laid right in me. But down in there, too, was another nature present, see, predestinated, a little spot of eternal life down there from the genes of God. And in another sermon, he says, now the genes in the father and the mother of this boy, no matter how much they are converted, still remains the flesh that's been interbred out to this boy. So, and in in that quote, if you remember, he's speaking about the nature of his spirit. Right, his attitude, his his characteristics, so that bo- body, soul, and spirit all there 
is being passed down through that genetic line. Then the last quote, he's a hybrid. He's got to be born again. You see, that's the reason we have to be born again, because that false serpentine life has been injected into the human race. And we have to be born again because our first birth is wrong. Amen. Souls that are in prison now. And the soul is something that's the nature of the spirit. And then when the nature of a man, when he said we are dead, the scripture plainly tells us we are dead and our lives are hid in God through Christ, sealed there by the Holy Spirit. Now, it wasn't that your body died. It wasn't your spirit died. It was the nature of your spirit died. See, the nature, which is the soul. The nature of your soul is God if you're born again. If it's not, it's of the world. I'm going to keep reading. I'm going to put this together. Communion. In their nature, I was a sinner. I came to the world a liar. All the habits of the world laid right in me. But down in there, too, was another nature present. See, predestinated was in there by God. In the same body, See, two natures in there. Amen. Continuing from communion. Pop and mom, they're gone on now to their rest. In them days, they were sinners. There was no Christianity in our homes at all. And oh my, drinking and parties and carrying on, it made me sick. I'd take my lantern and my dog and go to the woods to stay all night. In the wintertime, I'd hunt till the party was over. Maybe daylight in the morning, come here, wouldn't be over. I'd lay on the... I've laid on top of a shed and sleep, waiting for daylight to break. What was it? There was another William Branham, see? A little spot of eternal life down there from the genes of God, the word of God that was placed in there. Each one of you can think of similar th things. See, it was working. Amen. Now then, one day as I walked on, that voice talking, don't never smoke, drink, so forth, and the young fellows and all got older, see, there was something moving. But yet all at once I looked up and I said, I'm not the son of Charles and Ella Branham. There's something calling like my little eagle. I'm not a chicken. There's something up yonder somewhere. Oh, great Jehovah, whoever you are, open up. I want to come home. Amen. There's something in me calling. Then I was born again. That little life was laying there. The life of water was poured upon it. Then it began to grow. Now that old life was forgiven, put in the sea of God's forgetfulness to never be remembered against me no more. See, now we stand justified as though we had never sinned in the presence of God. Amen. All right. But inside of you, this is from leadership, you've got a soul. And that soul is the gene that come from God. Modern events made clear by prophecy. But the real ordained of God, that real gene, that real germ, a soul of God that was in God before the foundation of the world. Now you see that connection. That soul was in God before the foundation of the world. How did it get to you? Did it come directly from God to you? We, we saw and read before. No, it comes through. It passes through the human race, the genetics of the human race. You are born with that gene from God inside of your soul. And that, what, what does Brother Branham say? I think I have... Yeah. So let me, let me pause myself there for a second and read this scripture. Romans 6, 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. You say, what in the world does that have to do with anything? I want you to understand, we have two natures. I think I have this, yeah. So the soul is the nature of the spirit, right? We have two natures in our soul. There's a gene of God in our soul. There's also serpentine genetic in our soul as well, those two natures. Before the new birth, the serpentine nature in our soul dominates the gene of God, right? Yet, as we read from Brother Branham, the gene of God is there somehow producing like a covered over desire for righteousness and for God. See, it's, it's there. Brother Branham's telling that story. It was in there, that gene was in there working, right? But what is it? It's under the dominion of sin. That's the condition we are before we're born again. We are under the dominion of sin. So in that soul, there's two natures. One is dominating the other, right? Well, what does the new birth bring? It flips that. Now the gene of God should be dominating the other one. 
The word causes that, the gene of God's influence to grow. You understand, you, the Bible says you're dead and your life is hid from God. Brother Branham said, what is it that nature dies? It dies, but do you remember that you're battling against sin every single day? You're fighting against sin every single day. We have to die daily. In other words, we're in a process, right? And that gene of God is there. And the domination, when the new birth comes, the Holy Ghost comes to us, that domination flips over. Now the gene of God becomes dominant. But not totally dominant. When you're, when you're a babe in Christ, you have struggles, you have difficulties, you have things that you look back on and say, what did I ever struggle with that for before? Why? Because you're, you're a babe in Christ. You're that gene has to start growing. Brother Barham talks about watering it. The life has to water it. There's, what is it? We're wa washed by the washing of the water of the word. And that Holy Spirit waters that, also waters that word. So that gene of God, that seed of God. So there's that watering process that grows, that we have to grow and grow and grow. And when you look, when you're a newborn babe in Christ, and you're struggling with many things, you wonder, why can't I get over this? And then as, as you keep feeding on the word and keep fellowshipping with, with God in your, in, that gene, in your soul, what happens? The domination of the life of God per, is, begins to permeate your whole body until, your very, until this very body is changed. And this, this very body becomes subject to the rapture. Amen? All right. So that's overcoming. The gene of God is overcoming the serpentine nature within us. So, so we went over this last week, but I, I think I went fast, so I'm going to slow down a little bit. I got through the major portion that I wanted to get through uh, with a little bit of time left. So, all right. Looking back, Cain derived his genetics from who? The serpent? Only the serpent? No, the serpent and Eve. Remember, Adam could not be deceived. He was in the original creation. Eve was taken out of Adam, was in the secondary creation. Brother Branham says it's a byproduct. People hear that and they, they take it as a negative thing, like a hot dog is a byproduct of a pig. That's not what Brother Branham is saying. That's the word that he chose to use. He's saying she, he comes out of Adam. She wasn't a leftover. She wasn't in the second thoughts. Were you in the secondary thoughts of God? No. God's original purpose was Adam and Eve. But he made her in the second, second, secondary creation as a byproduct so that she could be deceived. Because God had a purpose. God had a purpose to, to express himself to us. So the genes in the father and the mother of this boy remains the flesh that's interbred out to this boy. So Abel and Seth, genes of Adam and Eve. If Eve can be deceived, guess what? Her children can be deceived as well. Genesis 6-2. We, we talked about it before. Sons of God saw the daughters of men. It's the Seth's line and Cain's line coming in and hybriding together. Brother Branham says the sons of God saw the daughters of men and cause the sons of God to fall into delusion. Delusion speaks of being deceived. In a blushing prophet, 1956, it grieved the heart of God when he looked upon them in the days before the antediluvian destruction that he ever made a man. What happened? The sons of God saw the daughters of men was fair. It was perversion. It was a sex mix-up. It was that thing that drove the children of God from the Garden of Eden. See, there's that hybrid. In uh, the, fall, the flashing red light of the sign of his coming. Notice the women of that day, in the days of Noah, must have been the talk of the day. See, the sons of God, Seth's, Seth's sons, saw the daughters of Cain, that they were beautiful. Why? They were wicked, and they were daughters of Cain. When the sons of God saw the daughters of men, they were fair. They took unto them women. And you remember, if we talked about last week, many uh, people are teaching that fallen angels came down and pressed their bodies or their their spiritual bodies into into flesh and produced and 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 took women and produced the nephilim the giants so they think that they they use this scripture which is it, it always makes me laugh they 
They condemn serpent seed doctrine, which has multitude of scriptures from Genesis to Revelation to demonstrate it. Uh, they say, how could that possibly be? That's disgusting. And then they fast forward five chapters and say, that's how it is. It's exactly like that. And it, uh, a spiritual being came down and had sex with women and produced giants. Uh, that's disgusting. <laughs> so we don't, we don't uh, base our doctrine on whether it's disgusting or not. We base it on the word. And Jesus said angels can't reproduce. Right? Otherwise, they would be, you'd make Satan be a creator. And it wasn't Satan directly that joined with Eve. It was the serpent. He was a created animal, just like the man, but without a soul. Right? So we'll continue on. Genesis 6 produced a mixed hybrid race. God wanted to bring his family forth through Adam and Eve, but through, through serpent seeds injection into humanity, First through Cain, then through the daughters of men. Every one of us are hybrid. I think that's clear from Scripture. You know, you can fast forward and say, well, Noah was perfect in his generations. But that's absolutely true. I believe Noah was the very last pure-born son of Adam. But what did his family line produce? <laughs> Me, <laughs> a sinner. You, a sinner. It's hybrid. It's clear it's hybrid. Ham, Shem, and Japheth produced all hybrids. The whole world is full of, full of that. And we saw, it, this read this last week, but we'll repeat it. John 8, 37. I know that you're Abraham's seed, sperma, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. So he says, I know that you're physically from Abraham. And he, verse 39, and this, this helps us to understand serpent seed. It, it, you know, maybe not so much more, but you used to hear people saying, oh, that one, I know that he's serpent seed. Well, do you know that you are, you have that life in you too? That's the mix-up is when we start thinking of there's these pure genetic lines, and that's where many of the racist doctrines, you see uh, black nationalists say white people are serpent seed. And you see white nationalists saying black people are serpent seed. They're all ignoramuses is what they are. They have no idea that the scripture, because it very clearly shows we're all a mixed race. So verse 39, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto him, if you were Abraham's technon, children, Tecton means sons, that there's a relationship, a bond, a similar characteristic, a similar nature. If you had the same nature as Abraham, you'd do the work of Abraham. You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. So you, here we see this, there's a genetic line, right, that he's looking at. And by election, in the very same nation, there's Abraham's seed who are of the devil, and there's Abraham's seed who are sons of Abraham, and they have a place inside of them that can receive the word. Those who are Abraham's seed, who are of the devil, there's no place in them to receive the word. They can't receive it. It's impossible. All right, let's, uh, let's stand.